Hi, this is our last video in the series. This actually has some bonus features with um, some premature beats as well as telling the difference between SVT or supraventricular tachycardia. And so that's something where a lot of people have some trouble with. So let's go ahead and talk about those. Let's talk about our premature beats first. So when we are having a rhythm, Okay, so when we are looking at our rhythms and we're asking ourselves our seven little questions that we come up with, and if you're not familiar with the seven questions, go back to video one and check out our getting started video. But question one in every single rhythm strip that you look at is, is there a P wave? And remember the question is not, is there a P wave? But it's, is there a P wave that's normal shape that is one for every QRS? So in this case, if we were to look, we would see one P wave for every QRS. Our next question is regularity. Do we have something that was regular? So now if I were to look at this one and try to walk this one out, I would see that it's not regular. There's actually this little guy here that makes it no longer regular. And once you decide that you have a premature beat, this one happened earlier in the pattern than it should have. It should have hit more right here. And so when you have something that happens early and you have premature beats, then you have underlying rhythms with premature beats. So this may be a sinus rhythm with some type of premature beat. Now, when you have the premature beats, all you need to do to figure out which beat it is, is to look at that one beat. And you look at the P wave. This P wave is a little too pointy. So this one is uh, an atrial, an atrial or a premature atrial contraction. The way that you know the difference is with your prematures, you have PACs, premature atrial contraction. You have PJCs, premature junctional contraction. And you have PVCs. Um, and so those are the different prematures that you can have. They all happen earlier than they should. Okay. When you look at this P wave, you're going to have a pointy upright P wave. So this is going to be upright. When you look at a premature junctional contraction, it's either going to be missing the P wave or it's going to have an inverted P wave. So if you have an upright P wave, it has to be a PAC. This one is either going to have none or inverted. Now with a PVC, it's going to have no P wave. So if you have something missing, then it's going to be a missing P wave. So it's either one of these. And the difference to tell is what I like to call skinny, skinny, and fat. That's an easy way to remember. So with premature atrial contractions, you're looking basically at one beat of atrial tachycardia. With premature junctional contractions, you're looking at one beat of premature junctional tachycardia. With the PVC, you're looking at one beat of premature ventricular tachycardia. So the difference between VTAC and atrial and junctional tach is VTAC, because it happens in the ventricle, that means that the QRS becomes really, really wide because it shouldn't occur. The stimulation should never occur in the ventricle, so it widens out the time it widens out the QRS and it makes it very, very fat. With these types, when you have a uh, rhythm where it's plugging along, and the QRSs look very, very similar, then it's gonna be one of these. When you've got the PVCs, what happens is they look totally different than the others. And you'll easily see that when you start studying with your strips. If the PVC looks very, very different, the QRS looks very, very different, then you know that it's falling into the PVC category. 
So premature beats, once you figure out you have them, you're looking at frequency per minute. When you're doing any charting, you need to know how many premature beats it's having per minute. Depending on what monitoring system you're using, usually it has it up on the monitoring system. It counts it for you. So if you come on shift and your patient's having premature beats of three per minute, and two hours later, you're now having premature beats of 15 per minute. Are we getting better or are we getting worse? That's the whole idea with premature beats. Because a lot of times nurses will give report off to each other and say, oh, he's having PVCs. Well, that's great that we know he's having them, but that's not enough information. Because I need to know how many per minute he's having so that I can address whether I'm staying the same or I'm getting better or I'm getting worse. If they're having PVCs because their electrolytes are off and you're filling the electrolytes, and giving them supplements, and then their PVCs get better, then we're gaining some ground. If we're not, um, then we need to be calling the doctor and finding out what they want to do with them, okay? Also, you can have premature beats that come in a pattern. So if you have a regular beat, premature beat, regular beat, premature beat, um, and it continues in the pattern, you'll hear the term bigeminy, or trigeminy, or quadriminy. So if you have patterns where regular beats and premature beats work together in a pattern, you can actually have some pattern uh, bigeminy and trigeminy and quadriminy going on. So that's a little bit about the premature beats. Now the last thing we're going to cover is SVT. And SVT I like to cover because so many people have trouble with this one. And once I learned it a certain way, it just made so much more sense to me. So SVT, we've all heard that term, but once I learned that really SVT isn't a rhythm, it doesn't exist, um, it's actually telling somebody that you have no idea what the rhythm is. It's like putting it in this bucket that is SVT. So if we go back to our questions, what's our first question? Is there a P wave? Well, I have no idea <laughs> because this is too fast. So once it gets above 150 or so, we lose the ability to see if there's a P wave. And once we lose that ability to see if there's a P wave, we can never tell for sure what rhythm it is. So our treatment is to slow it down to C. Now in order to stick something into the class of rhythms that is SVT, you have to have certain things. You have to have fast, okay? And we said greater than about 150, is where you start to lose the ability to see a P wave. The other thing that it has to be is it has to be skinny. If something is skinny, means the QRS looks fairly normal. So we've got that 0 0.12 uh, guiding uh, frame there. The other thing it has to be is it has to be regular. So if something is regular, it means that it marches out. So if I marched all these out, let's say, based on my drawing ability that all of those were regular. It has to be regular in order to stick it into the SVT bucket. So let's say that this is our SVT bucket, okay? To the best of my drawing ability. <laughs> so there are four things that are in the bucket. It can be sinus tac. So sinus tac is fast, skinny, and regular. If we were to slow it down, we'd see that we have a nice, rounded, one for every QRS P wave. The other thing that it can be, atrial tack. Atrial tack is fast, skinny, and regular. We would just be able to see, once we slowed it down, that the P wave was actually not a normal, rounded P wave. That would be the difference with atrial tack. The, last, the third one is junctional tack. Again, with junctional tack, we have fast, we have skinny, we have regular. If we were to slow it down, we'd see that there's no P waves or an inverted P wave, and that would tell us that it was junctional tack. Now, the last one that goes in this bucket, we need one other rhythm that's fast, skinny, 
and regular. And remember I said there's two rhythms that can be either regular or irregular. So this could be A flutter. A lot of people don't realize that SVT can actually be A flutter. If you had a two to one conduction ratio that was very, very rapid, if you slowed it down, you'd be able to see the sawtooth uh, atrial flutter, um, flutter um, rhythm. So those are the four things that it can be in the SVT bucket. Now, if you see a rhythm that is fast, skinny, and irregular, it's not regular. The only thing it can be is AFib. Okay? So fast, skinny, irregular. Only thing it can be is AFib. Okay? So if you see something that's really fast, it's 180, but you can very well see that it's not regular, it's not SVT, it's a rapid, uncontrolled AFib, and you need to be doing something about it because it means the patient probably doesn't feel very good. Okay? So those are your premature beats. That is your SVT. That's the end of our videos. Let us know what other videos you want to watch to help you with your training and help you with your education. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.